Hello everyone, welcome to the Vets Tip. Um, let's get started. Um, so as I do every week, I go over my NFL takeaways from the previous week and my predictions for this upcoming week. Um, so let's start with last week's NFL takeaways. Chiefs versus Chargers. Too aggressive. I have no issues um, with um, Coach Daly going on, um, for, going for on fourth down conversions sometimes. In fact, I think it's better to be more risky than conservative. But the thing is, you have to find a balance between the two. For example, Andy Reid, he's a coach that known as known for going on fourth down a lot. But two to three times he was offered a field goal try, he took it. Four times the Chargers could have kicked the field goal. They went for every time and got nothing. I know being aggressive is how they won earlier in the year at Kansas City. But sometimes Ricky... Um, Coach Daly needs to just um, read the room, basically, or in other words, feel the momentum. For example, on the first drive, when they got to the five-yard line, three straight passing, play, passing plays results in zero yards, nothing completed. So if you're at the one- or two-yard line, then yeah, it's fine to go for it. But with no momentum on the three previous plays, just take the three points. And then right before halftime, you know, the Chargers had all the momentum, and the Chiefs, you know, again, the ball started the second half, which means you had to score. But instead of, you know, just taking the field goal to be up by full touchdown, it's like, nope, we want to go for the touchdowns. And then instead, they got nothing. So, I mean, just leaving those six points right there was the difference of the game, you know. So, if I were, again, you don't, have to, you don't have to be too conservative. There's definitely times to go for it, be risking all that. But it's just like, you got to, you know, feel the momentum and read the situation. Patriots versus Colts. Harder from behind. So this is a rare situation, but Mac Jones realized it's harder to win when you're coming from behind by two possessions and uh, not playing with the lead. Different from Alabama in games where Mac Jones had, you know, chill in the fourth quarter at any point this year, he's 1-5, with that 1-1 being against the Texans. So this is why I don't think they will um, win the Super Bowl or even make it there, because while it's anyone's game in the AFC at some point in the fourth quarter in the playoffs, you pay trail, and you have to lead a comeback. Maybe one day he'll do that, but right now, he's a rookie, so I don't expect it. Cowboys versus Giants. Where is the O? Once again, the op- once again the defense was fine, but, but like the offense has just been such a hit and miss, you know. Uh, it hasn't been great the past few months. But now the real test comes when they, you know, reface Washington again, and then they have Arizona, and then Philly, who's emerging, have them in the finale, so... There's chances for the office to finally get improved you know, before they die right in the playoff play. Panthers versus Bills. Hey, they can run. Bills finally had a good running game compared to other, you know, to compared to a lot of other bad games this year. And because of that good running game, they're able to have a very good offensive passing game um, with Josh Allen coming off the injury. And honestly, they they didn't need that much of offense. It's Carolina's offense just so pathetic. Uh, Matt Rule is saying that he's probably going to start Cam Newton, but Sam Darnold, who's back from injury, will get some playing time. So whenever you have to do two QBs or three QBs, you know, it's just kind of, it means you don't have anything. <laughs> Titans versus Steelers. That's the Steelers defense. After the first quarter, the Steelers defense finally play like, you know, we're used to seeing them, you know, throughout the years, forcing multiple turnovers and being clutch when it matters. Only giving up 13 points of the Tennessee is pretty good. Even though it's a depleted Tennessee, it's still pretty good. Now, I think they must finish 2-1 over the next three in order to even sniff the playoffs, but, you know, anything can happen. Cardinals versus Lions. Falling off a cliff. For the second straight week in a row, Kingsbury was outcoached and the team was sloppy. They can kiss the one seat goodbye, and honestly, they just have to worry about winning the division at this point since their time at the Rams. If they are flat again against a hot Colts team, then they could cost themselves the division. Jets versus Dolphins. Six in a row. Miami has won six straight to be 500 in the playoff race, although I still think they won't make it. Besides the Ravens, their wins have been against the Jets, Twice, Giants, um, who, el- who else? I'm um, against the Texans, I think it is. So just a bunch of, you know, bad teams. So I, I want to see them against, you know, a way better team. Um, like the Saints are you know, a great team, but they're, they're decent teams. So I want to see how they do on Monday night. Uh, before I get really excited or not about them. Texans versus Jaguars. Meyer not the only problem. With Meyer leaving, I thought the team would, you know, ball out and kind of be like a, 
you know, screw you, Meyer, you know, look how we'll perform without you, look how we'll try without you, but, you know, they still got shellacked by Houston and gave the rookie Davis Mills his first win of the season, so it just shows that the Jaguars have a lot more problems and then they realize, and that's why they're in position if they lose out to have the number one pick. Um, Bengals versus Broncos. Denver's air is getting thin. So with Tay Bridgewater knocked out of the game, he's most likely out with the concussion for this upcoming game. Drew, like as expected, he couldn't deliver, um, and I imagine uh, he probably won't deliver again next week. Although, because the Raiders, you know, are in the same position, same record, trying to fight for a playoff spot. Um, but it's going to be interesting because if that ends up, like I said, I feel like the loser of this game would not make the playoffs. So right now, while Denver still has a mathematical chance to get in. You know, it's pretty slim at this point. Falcons versus 49ers. Can't stop the momentum. I would say the 49ers are the hottest team in the NFL right now. When you factor in how the team in totality is playing and the teams they have beaten in recent weeks. The 49ers could still technically win division, so the NFC West race will come down to the wire. Packers versus Ravens. The two-point curse. Once again, Harbaugh is not trusting his defense, which I understand. you got a lot of injuries on defense, and again, it's Rodgers, that makes sense, and, and they go for it. Uh, go for on two, and once again, they don't get it. I didn't mind him going for two, but this time the play call, I feel like, wasn't as great as the first one against Pittsburgh last week, so you gotta you got to have the perfect play call if you're going to go for two since it's so, such a risky move to do. Saints versus Bucks. Dennis the Menace. Temporary head coach Dennis Allen filling for Sean Payton due to COVID. Called a great game, and Brady was shut out for the first time since 2005. First time being shut out at a home game. Uh, Brady still can't win in the regular season against his team, which which is crazy since he's been a Buccaneer. Now, you can definitely say injuries played a factor, and it did, but the Saints have a bunch of injuries. Well, they were missing two tackles, Michael Thomas, you know, so it's like it's kind of a no excuse type of thing. Um, even without those injuries, I felt like the Saints defense was going to, like, you know, hold them enough to where they're going to win. Um now the question is, uh, for the Saints, you have to win out because you get the Vikings, who are ahead of you, Philly, who has a tiebreaker over you. So it's important for the Saints um, to figure out how to offense to continue to um, grind it out to get the win if they want to get in the playoffs. Um, Raiders versus Browns. Another Carr heroic moment. While Carr has struggled at times this year, there's no doubt about that, there are plenty of times, despite the chaos and dysfunction and all that, where he has been clutch in a do-or-die moment. He delivered a game when he drive. No, I still think there's not. I still think they're not making the playoffs at this point because they got at Indy, which is a loss, versus Chargers as a loss, and then obviously versus Denver coming up. Um, so they might win that game um, since they're facing Drew Locke, but I feel like the final two games they will lose. So therefore, they'll be eight and nine out of the playoffs. But you know, at least for the Raiders, you have hope at this point. Um, for the Browns, you just basically have to win at this point, but any chance of them getting in is kind of slumped to none. Vikings versus Bears. The baby Bears. As they said in the broadcast many times, just feels such a rookie, you know, therefore this year's kind of experimental year, progression year, you know, try to improve, blah, blah, blah. Now, I think, no, I thought they would get the upset this week. That was before I found the whole secondary was out um, for COVID. So while the Vikings got the win, which is needed, they get. They did do some impressive fashion. Now they got the Rams and the Packers, and then your rival Chicago again, who will be healthier next time you face them, assumingly. So the playoff chances, I feel like, are still pretty slim. Even though right there, even though right now they're at the seventh spot, um, but they need to get it upset. If they want to get in. Washington versus Philly. It's Hurts' time. With a few weeks left, Hurts had a chance to solidify his job for next season. Um, I feel like. Um, and he has a good chance to do so because he gets to face a bad Giants team, gets to face Washington again, and then the Cowboys. Now, here's the thing, though. Against the Cowboys, he has struggled mildly against them the two times he's played them. So he needs to bounce back and play. Even if for some reason they lose, he needs to play very well against that team if he wants to have a really good shot at being a star again next year. And if he gets to see in the playoffs, I feel like he's already locked it up for next year. Um, but we'll see what happens. Seahawks versus Rams. Thunderstorms in the forecast. Seattle is finally starting to find a rhythm, beat, you know, beating the 49ers team that was red hot and taking care of Houston. Fan, you know, scoring a bunch of points on offense. Fans dreaming they could somehow sneak into the playoff picture, but instead they came all crashing down. And the bright days have turned to doom and gloom as Seattle will miss the out in the playoffs for only the second time 
in the Russell Wilson era and the first time they will have a losing record in the Russell Wilson era. So now to go over my predictions for this week. So let's start with tonight's Thursday Night Football game between the 49ers and Titans. Um, for this game, I feel like because the 49ers are so hot right now, um, and because the Titans, you know, have so many injuries, you know, Henry's out, Julio Jones out, Adrian Brown probably might have a shot to play, but I assume he's going to be out. Um, it's just too much for Tennessee to overcome. Now, the 49ers were a heavy passing team. that actually played in the Titans' hands, you know, because they have a good pass rush and all that. But um, I feel like because 49ers are good at riding the ball and they've been on a hot streak, I feel like without the offense weapons to match, I feel like it's going to be hard for Tennessee and despite being the home team here, because you remember home teams on Thursday Night Football is typically your favorite, but I have a hard time seeing them um, matching the offensive production of the 49ers. So therefore, I'll take the 49ers to win by 10, 24 to 14 in, in cover. Um, Saturday, you got two Christmas games. You get the Browns versus the Packers. Packers are very bad touchdown. Um, in this game, whether Baker Mayfield comes back or Case Keenum comes back or it has to be Nick Mullins again, the Packers are going to win this game easily. And the question is by how much. I feel like because the Browns are playing for the playoff lives, they'll play desperate, but in the end, Packers' talent will just be too much for them. So I have Packers winning by two touchdowns, so they're covering 28-14. Next, you get the Colts versus Cardinals. Cardinals favorite by one. Um, I feel like this is a very bad matchup for the Cardinals because over the past couple weeks, they've been susceptible to giving up a bunch of rushing yards. And what does Jonathan Taylor do well? rushing so therefore as long as the Colts don't have to you know make Carson Wentz beat Arizona and they can just rush the ball I feel like and plus Cardinals have been kind of if, if he at home I feel like the Colts are going to go in there um, with them trying to secure definitely secure a playoff spot and, and get the win I might have Carlos I mean Colts winning I mean the episode 27-21 Lions versus Falcons now I'm going to give the Lions a chance here the win against the Falcons teams but the Falcons against bad teams generally win the game and their favorite is five and a half. I don't feel like they'll cover that five and a half. But I do feel like the Falcons, you know, who are fighting for their playoff life still technically will go ahead and win this game 24 20. Ravens versus Bengals. Bengals favorite by two and a half. I like this game for the Bengals, not only because they blew them out the first time and in Baltimore, but also the Ravens. I feel like they say they might only have like 13 defense players, 15 defense players. They're just so decimated on defense right now. So I feel like since seeing their offense could take advantage of that, I'm so I'm winning 31 17. Rams versus Vikings. I have. Um, the Rams getting the win here because they feel like they can shut down Vikings offense, especially you now I have a feeling they can, you know, Jane Ramsey can guard um, Justin Jefferson. So as long as they stop Dallin Cook in the run game, they should win. So I have them winning 23 17. Bills versus Patriots. Patriots favorite two and a half. I felt like this would be within a one position game again. But again, Buffalo not be able to run the ball well. I feel like the Patriots will take advantage of that. And the Patriots win by touchdown at home 20 to 13 to win, to go back to winning the division. Jaguars versus Jets. I'm still taking the Jets here at 2.5, but I don't feel like they'll cover be a one-point victory for the Jets, 17-16. But with, like, 15 players out and the head coach out for COVID at the Jets, it makes it interesting. Um, Giants versus Eagles. Again, Eagles will win this one. Um, they'll barely cover because I feel like um, Giants always play them pretty well. So, but I have Philly like winning in a low-scoring game, 17-7. Bucks versus Panthers. Despite all the injuries, Bucks win super easily. I have them winning 27-7. Chargers versus Texans. Easy peasy. Chargers win 35-14. Bears versus Seahawks. Um, this will, I, have, I don't have the Seahawks covering here at 6.5. I do have them um, winning this game because they are the better team in Chicago at home. So I have Seattle winning by 4, 17, 13. Next, you got um, Broncos versus Raiders. Again, with Drew Locke starting in Las Vegas, you know, getting momentum last week, playing for the playoff lives. I have, uh, and then whipping the Broncos the first time. Um, I have the Raiders winning um, by touchdown, 20 to 14. Um, next, you got Steelers versus Chiefs. So Chiefs favorite by seven and a half. I don't have the Chiefs covering that, but I still do have the Chiefs win. Mainly, the, I would have the Chiefs covering that, but the problem is with all their COVID issues. You know, Travis Kelsey had Tyreek Hill out. It's just going to be, it's going to be all focused on Mahomes here. So I feel like because the Pittsburgh's offense is that bad, the Chiefs can overcome it. But it won't. It'll be a close game. So I have them winning fifteen thirteen. Sunday football, Washington Cowboys. Cowboys favorite by 11. I think that's right on the dot there. Perfect. I have Cowboys winning 24 13. We saw they play last week a few weeks ago. I feel like it'll be the same story there. And then last but not least for Monday football, you got Dolphins versus Saints. Saints favorite by three. I feel like that's spot on as well. This game can go either way because both defenses are great. Um, but both, you know, quarterbacks are playing, you know, so so right now. They're both being carried by their defense, basically. Um, because at home, though, Saint, you know, Saints really, really, really need this win. Um, to get over the hump, I feel like they'll get the win here. 
um, and finally ended the Dolphins' six-game winning streak. Adam winning 16-13. Thank you very much, and y'all have a wonderful Christmas.